Olá, gente! Tudo bom com vocês? Nós estamos aqui com mais um podcast da IFIG e eu trouxe uma convidada muito especial da Escola Riley, que fica pertinho de Niagara Falls. É uma escola maravilhosa. Boarding também. Tá? Tem IB, muita coisa legal. Então, vamos trazer a Ana? Hey, Ana, how are you? Hi, Malka, good. How are you? I am great. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. Well, so you're here to share a little bit about the college. What can you tell us about Ridley? Oh, um, there's lots to share about Ridley for sure. But, um, you know, I'd like to focus today on the IB program. Very few schools offer um, this unique curriculum and Ridley, of course, being one of them. We're, um, as you said, a boarding and day school near uh, Niagara Falls in Canada. And we have students from 60 countries here at the school, one of the biggest boarding schools with 350 boarders living on campus seven days a week. So it's a wonderful community, lots of opportunities here for students. It's a, a beautiful 90 acre campus, uh, definitely a place worth visiting either for the summer or the school year. That sounds amazing. And nowadays, uh, the IB curriculum is very important to the students that they aim on the, on those higher level universities, right? Absolutely. Those students who are really driven and have big goals of going to Ivy League universities, whether in the U.S., Canada, or anywhere in the world, those really high level uh, programs that are very difficult to get into, IB certainly helps students to pave their way and, and uh, increase their chances of getting into those schools for sure. Yeah, and that makes the, the difference when it's time for you to um, make your curriculum stand out from the others, right? And But how does it work really, Anna? Do we have pre-IB? When do we start? What, it, what does IB involve so we can have students understand it a little bit better? Yeah, absolutely. So IB has a continuum of three different stages. So there's the primary years, which is the first few grades of school, starting from grade one. And then there's the middle years program, which goes up to grade 10. And very few schools have all of these levels. They usually focus on the last part, which is the diploma program. And this is grade 11 and 12. It's a two year program. Um, that is kind of a package deal. So once you start in grade 11, you're going on to grade 12 uh, without stopping. It's the same teachers, the same courses. It's exactly as it sounds, a two-year program. And many schools offer this last part, but we offer all three. So we're an IB continuum world school. Um, and what this means is that students could start this program early. And it's not so much what they learn, but how they learn that's different from other curriculums. So in the diploma program in those last two years is when things really uh, become different in terms of the content of information as well. So students do dive a lot deeper into the subjects and learn more about everything. Um, and that's what really differentiates their learning from the learning of others who are not in the IB program. So that's the, the general kind of um, overview. But the unique thing about Ridley is that we will accept students into the diploma program without any previous IB experience. And this just speaks to our competence and our teachers and coordinators who are able to get students up to speed in the two years that they're here and really help them to succeed. And our pass rates and um, scores, IB scores, are higher than the world average, which means that we're doing a good job at it. Yeah, and that's amazing. Um, but Anna, does, does IB have like a, a pathway? Is it just one subject? Do Is it the whole curriculum that the student has to change? How does it really work uh, for the student to s enroll? Like, for instance, if we're talking about 10th grader that is thinking about starting in 11th grade with you guys, um, mm -hmm. how is the student meant to prepare to start with you guys and, like, level up with the other students? 
Yeah, well, so we have um, in the summer a course that we offer that's called IB Prep and High School Prep. So it's a really great course to start with to allow a student to become more comfortable with what IB is going to entail. Um, ultimately, it's a little bit of a mind shift in terms of the grading system or the way that um, you approach learning in general, and students can get caught up on that. It's not mandatory to do, but for those who just want that little bit more comfort and entry a new program that's a great start but to answer your first question um, IB is in fact a full curriculum and full program it is unlike AP courses which I think some people might have heard of those are individual isolated courses so you could take AP math and then you will have you'll be a little bit ahead in math and could go to university and feel more confident in math whereas IB is a full diploma. It is a two-year comprehensive program that includes the courses that students are taking, but also other components called the IB Core. Within the IB Core, there are three requirements. One is an extended essay. So through this extended essay that students write over the two years, they're learning how to do research, how to report their findings, how to write a well-written essay, and they're doing this with the help of their advisors and coordinators who are guiding them the whole way, making them edit this again and again until they get to a very good quality, concise paper. And this is the extended essay. This gets graded as part of the program requirement. There's also an, a course, a whole separate course called Theory of Knowledge. And in this course, students are learning about learning. And this is very important because we want to make sure that students are lifelong learners because they will go on to university and they will go on to do micro courses throughout their even career, continuing to learn. So being good at learning is very important. It's a very important component of IB. So the theory of knowledge course really dives into sort of the philosophies of the learning process. And then there's also something called CAS. This is creativity, activity, and service. And students are required to complete 50 hours of each. And all this really means is it's, it's pushing them to be active, to be creative, and to help their community raising global citizens, which is ultimately the kind of the high level goal of IB is to raise global, intelligent global citizens who will do good for the world. And that's, uh, that's amazing. I mean, like how the IB courses, they combine everything and focus really on, on students' soft skills to make them, you know, uh, better citizens as well. It's, it's, it's completely amazing. Um, I know that for AP, when we finish the AP course, we are meant to do an extra test, right? To get that approved. Um, how does it work for IB? Does the school uh, give me the, give the test? How does it work? Yeah, so um, IB students will write their exams all over the world on the same day in May. Um, it's actually kind of nice for students because they're done earlier than a lot of other kids who are doing other programs, but because of the intensity of this um, curriculum, they are able to finish in May. So everybody writes one exam, well, per course, um, in May at the end of their second IB year, so what we would call, I guess, grade 12. No exams are written in grade 11. They do mocks to practice, but nothing that goes to, into the records. Um, also with IB, the grading system is focused on most recent, most consistent. So if a student starts off poorly, but then improves and continues to improve and stay at that higher level, those beginning grades they got don't count for anything. So it's a really nice way to encourage students to keep growing and keep improving. And it gives them a chance to drop off those early, potentially not good um, marks that they received. Yeah, it, it helps them uh, bring their scores up, right? And so when yeah. it's time to enroll to the university, they have like an amazing, gorgeous final score. Um, and tell us something, and when it's time for us to enroll at a university, and we have an IB curriculum, uh, what does that bring to the table, really? Mm -hmm. So certainly all universities are different. For example, universities in Canada mostly don't really focus on IB. Some value it as a kind of a secondary 
piece, but they're looking at grades a lot of the times. So it's very important, and this is something that our guidance team focuses a lot on, is finding out what are the students' goals, where did they wish to apply, and will IB help them get there? For those students who are, as I said in the beginning, aiming towards very competitive programs, potentially all over the world, oftentimes in the United States, but also throughout Europe, um, they are about 10 to 15 percent more likely to get into an Ivy League school. So we actually have charts and, and statistics from this. And if it's the chances of getting into um, one of the Ivy Leagues like Yale or Princeton or one of those universities, if um, it's usually it's about four or five percent. Uh, acceptance rate, then with IB that grows to 17% wow. or 12% or 20% with some cases. So it really does help uh, very much to get into those programs. And kind of the students shows the university that they are capable of learning a little bit extra, right? Like they're yes. not limited at all. A hundred percent. It's exactly why the universities value it. It's uh, for sure, they care that the student has um, dived deeper into certain courses and has explored maybe technologies or tools or facilities that the university has. So they have experience with that. They know that they're getting students who are excellent learners, who are open-minded and global citizens, who understand the interconnectivity between different courses, and who generally will... Um, will be a pleasure to teach because they're already a level higher than a lot of the other students coming in. Yeah, that is so uh, true. Um, Anna, so what kind of tips would you give to the Brazilian students that think about starting IB but really don't know where to begin? Because we hear it all the time everywhere and all the time there's different information and, and it's more information that keeps adding to it. Um, so what tips can we give to the Brazilian student that would like to start in an IB course soon? So I definitely would recommend doing some research. Um, you know, IB is a program that requires a lot of self-guided learning and um, a lot of curiosity. And, and, and this is kind of how the program moves through is the teachers, they don't Pull the kids along. They walk next to them and they provide them with resources. So similarly, when you're looking into what IB is, it's a very good idea to do some research. IBO, which is the International Baccalaureate Organization, which originally started this program, is has a website and the website is um, available in a number of languages and it's very helpful in understanding really more about this program. Is it right for you? Also, if you're considering schools, specific schools, they will be very happy to share some of this information with you and connect you with the types of people within the school and other students as well who have gone through this program and who can share their experience. But we live in a wonderful world of technology and information available to everyone. So just a simple Google search on the benefits of IB, what is IB all about, and really just getting familiar with it and making sure that this is the right path for you is a good place to start. Um, but in terms of preparation, as I mentioned, maybe some courses in, in summer courses, preparing for IB in general is, is also a great idea. That is an amazing tip, Anna. Thank you so much. Um, would you like to share a little bit more about uh, the school, about you guys, your location, and everything so students can get to know you a little bit better? Sure, absolutely. Um, I think I'll just talk about it because there, there are a few things that I'd like to mention. Um, as I said before, we are located in, uh, it's it actually the city is called St. Catharines and its second name is the Garden City. Um, and it's, the reason for that is it's very green. Um, it's nice because we're about an hour and a half away from Toronto, which of course everybody knows. 
uh, close enough for students to visit on weekends, for example, and take some trips with the school. But we are in a smaller town, so um, things are a little bit quieter here and you're able to enjoy nature and just focus on your studies. The campus is 90 acres and has basically everything here. We have two theaters, we have sports facilities, um, an ice hockey arena, so even if you don't play hockey or skate, you can come and watch the games when our teams play. Um, arts, theater, as I already mentioned, facilities, um, VEX robotics for those students who are into programming and are looking to go into engineering. These are excellent programs. So over 75 different co-curriculars in every area you can imagine, including leadership, which is really important these days as well. So students are encouraged here to just experiment, try everything. We have a success story that I love to share this year. A student came to us in grade nine uh, from locally, from St. Catharines, and um, he started rowing. Rowing is one of the biggest sports here on campus, one of the most competitive and also in the region. Anyway, so he started this in grade nine for the first time, fell in love with it, and just this year graduated from Ridley um, as a rower, but also uh, an excellent student and received a full scholarship to Yale University to row for them. Um, That's amazing. So he not only got in, yeah, but it, he's also going there completely for free, which is such a huge accomplishment. That is such a, an amazing story. That is so cool. And it really goes to show that not only e your curriculum is important, but I mean, like, if you like, you can add sports to it, right? And and be able to get the scholarship of your dreams. Absolutely. And a lot of students here are athletes and they are doing something like that in order to um, get admittance to these universities in addition, as you said, to the curriculum. But ultimately, we're looking to offer um, activities, tools, facilities to students and kind of push them a little bit to come out of their comfort zone and to try something new because you never know what you might fall in love with if you've never tried it before. And so this explorative um, approach to learning and to just in general student life is what's really important here. Students are always busy, they're always doing things, uh, but it's not always busy with just study, study, study. It's you know, you've got your school, you've got your sports, you've got your other co-curriculars, you've got your friends and trips and um, activities that are going on on campus. So it's fast paced, it's busy, but it's fun busy and you're always amongst friends. So I think that that, that community and that camaraderie that they have here is probably the most important. Oh, that's amazing. Um, Anna, I, first of all, I wanted to thank you for coming and sharing all this information with our students. It's really important for them to really understand what's out there and all the opportunities that they have uh, to reach their goals and their dreams, right? And so mm -hmm. thank you so much for coming and sharing all this information with our students. And thank you so much, guys. Thank you. Thank Obrigada. you. Obrigada. It's not like other schools. I can tell you that there's something, yeah, for everybody to excel at. You try something new and you might really, really enjoy it. There's a lot of options here. It's like the arts program, the music, the sports. Anything you want to do, there's always the opportunity to do it here. I never thought that uh, all this could be in one school. I really, really love it here. It's like a community here. You know, it's sort of like a big family.